I'm growing old Nothing's gonna change that fact Almost over you Listen this in the evening. Good evening. My name's John Jenkins. I'm here to talk about my latest album, Growing Old, Songs from My Front Porch, which came out in June of this year. Um, I've got some questions to um, to answer about it. I've got my cup of tea with my Growing Old mug, just to remind people that it's still available. So, questions I shall go through and talk about the songs as we go on, okay. So this album came off the back of what? So, um, this album came out in June this year, as I said, and last year I brought out an album with my band, the James Street Band, it was called Looking For That American Dream, which um, had some great, great reviews, um, got 9 out of 10 from the Americana Association. Um, some wonderful things said about it, but, um, that's what it came on the back of, but having a band, if you are a musician, you probably know that it's quite difficult sometimes to get everyone together um, for gigs and so on and so forth. And when I play, I either play either with like about four or five people or about 12 people on stage, depending on the size of the venue. So I really wanted to do something that was more just me. I think because I had some quiet mellow songs and I felt so it might be better just stripping them back It'll be so I thought this album again. I'll do where if I go out and play live it's, it was called Songs From My Front Porch but initially it was going to be called something like Songs From The Open Mic because I do do a lot of open mics I, I like debuting songs and playing songs that I um, have not Played before just to get them out there and sort of see how, how, how they feel. Um, so I consciously had an idea that I wanted to do an album of strip back songs. But it came off the back of the Looking for That American Dream, James Street Band, John Jenkins and the Street, the James Street Band album, which was quite, I wouldn't say boisterous, it's got some up tempo numbers, but um, it's got a lot of people on it. I mean, I love that album, I love the band, the band are great. But I just thought I had a few songs which I wanted to do in a sort of strip back mode. So, so how, did you have a preconceived idea of how you wanted it to sound before it was recorded? Well, I've just answered my own question there, haven't I? Yeah, I did. I deliberately wanted it to sound not as big as the previous album, but I, did want, I didn't want it just to be me and a guitar or a piano. I wanted a few instruments on it, but not necessarily real drums. Um, John Norton, the co-producer with me, who's the engineer, is an absolutely wonderful person. Engineer, producer, a lot of musician. He plays all my guitars for me on there because he's better than me. Um, I spoke to him about it and um, I said, you know, I'm going for the sounds, a particular sound, and a lot of it, the drums were programmed with that particular sound that we um, agreed would, would fit the concept of the album. So, did I go in the studio with more songs than I put on the album? And if so, are these songs lying around? Um, or did I select the ones for the project from a batch or just record enough for the album, but not left over? Well, to be honest, I, um, I've always got about five songs in John's studio hanging around. Um, but for this album, I mainly wrote them the year before last. Um, last year, I was on a cruise last year. I've been listening to Bob Dylan's Basement Tape box set, and that inspired me. So I've done a lot of the writing uh, for the album um, on a cruise. I had a lot of ideas, I just working on lyrical ideas and so on. So I had more or less most of the songs lined up that I wanted to record. There was one song I started to record, but it was a little bit more than the sound was a bit more different from the other songs on the album. So I'm, that's called The End of Summer. That's going to be coming on a new project, which I'm going to do a bit further down the line. So um, how long did it take to record? Well, it took, oh, God, blimey. Um, 
for about a year. Yeah, probably gone and off about a year. A lot of the recording was done in, in lockdown. Um, songs getting sent back and forth from John Lawton. When he was, we tracked everything, fortunately, before the lockdown happened. So we just needed to mix them. And um, so he was sending the stuff back and forth. And I, um, I had to say, oh, I want this a bit louder, or can you put some echo on this, or can you try this sound on a guitar? Can you add a little guitar here? And so on. So it's probably, probably about a, 12 months, but not like 12 months, you know, every day 12 months. It's like, you know, when you can't get into Cross Town Studio, John's a victim of his own success. He's, um, he's that much in demand now that, you know, if I wanted to be session now, I'd be looking at maybe February and I'm, I'm recording this in October. So, you know, I always have my dates lined up, but I'm never quite sure what I'm going to be doing um, at the time. So, um, yeah, so it was done over a year, quite a lot of sessions. Um, who produced it? Well, me and John Norton produced it. We, um, we always co-produced our, our stuff, or my stuff, I should say. Um, basically, I, I do enjoy the production side of things. I, um, you know, a lot of people think that John produces it on his own. And he does engineer it, and he does sit there and twiddle about with us. With his knobs, I'm going to say it, with his, um, with his faders, and he, um, you know, he gets sounds which without consulting me, <laughs> um, and sometimes I go, well, on that, you know, or, or that's great, that, you know. So we, um, it's, a, it's, you know, it's co production, but he's the engineer and he programs everything, you know, um, you know, all the drums. I get lost on the drums, you can just. You know, sort of write it out before even the song sort of playing, you know. Everything Who played so on the album? Okay. Well, I had wonderful people playing on it. I had, um, you know, so it's all in the sort of helps me to remember. So, I've had, um, you know, I sang on it, obviously, done some back and vocals, some keyboards. John Lawton done all the programming, a lot of percussion, guitars, a little bit of bass as well. But yeah, well, a lot of bass, actually, to be honest, to be fair to him. Amy Chalmers, the wonderful Amy Chalmers. Um, she done the violin and the string arrangements. She's just tell me I'm just a memory. Um, I got my old mate Siobhan Mark Kennedy. We were in the band together in the um, the eighties called the Persuaders. And you don't recognise. Um, she done a duet. More about the song a bit later on with me. Lee Sean played some keyboards on it. Phil Chisnell played mandolin on a couple of tracks. Andy Connolly. From Wet to Tea, played flutes on a couple of tracks. That was a wonderful experience as well. John Armstrong from the Folk Doctors. Oh, John. He played um, banjo. And I had some backing singers. I had Pepe and Mike uh, from the Paris Wives doing the uh, backing vocals. And April Harrison and Chris Harbin from Pillow Talk done backing vocals as well on a couple of tracks. Chris Jones played the bass. And I even got David Nixon to play harmonica on one of the tracks. I think um, the track was... Um, Dying by inches. So they were they were the musicians on, on this album. Um, I do like using a lot of musicians. And I like using new musicians all the time because sometimes they can bring something completely different to one of your songs which you never expected. Um, what's the reaction been? Well, those that have heard it think it's really, really good. I've had some fantastic reviews. I've had about 15 magazine internet reviews, all positive, um, I think the only negative thing that was the one from um, the Americana this time, uh, the guy didn't like some of the lyrics on a couple of the songs and focused on that, but he still liked it, but he, um, you know, that was the negative one, that was the only negative one, everyone else seems to think it's really, really good, um, one of my mates doesn't like it. <laughs> Um, who played on the album, but, but she'll remain nameless, will be Dave. Um, anything you change now or happy with? I wouldn't change a thing. Um, it was done in a certain way. It was um, a project. I, you know, my friend said, um, you know, all the songs are quite slow, and not, you know, sort of, there's no really big big sound and songs and well yeah because it wasn't supposed to be like that that's going to be on the next one so um i mean i do like you know 
Bruce Springsteen, Nebraska, is just an amazing album. You know, it really isn't like these three band stuff. So that's what I was doing. Has a soul many? No. This is why I'm doing this. Why hasn't soul many? Um, people just don't buy CDs anymore. Um, because of lockdown, I haven't been able to play live to actually get out there and play it or sell it. Uh, I wish people would buy it because it cost a lot of money. To, um, I mean, I paid musicians, um, and I paid the studio, obviously. So I, I you know, so finance. So it's, you know, it's nice to get a little bit back to, because, um, you know, my credit card limits, you know, is terrible. <laughs> um, any particular favourite tracks? Oh, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'm probably, I think Jackson's Farm. Is my favourite, um, and I think mainly because of Amy's string parts. Um, that one, I um, when she done the strings and uh, when we put the video together, to I was just absolutely knocked out with this. You know, it's like something from a cinema, you know, like a film kind of thing. You know, it felt like a very film, filmatic. Is that the right word? Cinematic. That's the word. Cinematic. Filmatic. Um, I do make words up, by the way, that don't actually exist. If you had to pick one song to place to someone from the album, uh, what would it be? Um, I think it's um, probably Jackson's Farm, really, again. Read the one I like. A lot of people like Heartlands, though. So, uh, maybe that one as well. And who was playing it too. Okay. Is the album any different from previous albums? Yes and no. I have a style that I've been told when I sing, or oh, maybe put too many words in your lines. David Nixon can tell me that. Um, uh, you know, but musically, um, this will sound like my songs, but as I said, it hasn't got like the big sort of James Brand or the previous album with no shot. She had session music. It's just a lighter side of me, you know. Tell us about each song. Right, well, um, first track, Growing Old, the type track, kind of. Growing Old is, is, um, is a song, a songwriting book here. I was just trying to refresh my memory on it. Um, I actually wrote this in June 2018. Um, this is the, one of my songwriting books, which I covers window shopping and the Chain Street Band and so on. And this is the other one. Another songwriting book. I sit in cafes and work on the lyrics and stuff like that. Growing old, I actually remember um, finishing that off on holiday. I was on holiday with Lynn and we. Um, we were sitting outside this nice bar and I had this idea it doesn't about lie. writing a song about sort of me getting old, fucking in a minute and just not is this guy? wanting to acknowledge the fact that I've gone grey, gone baldy, you know, weird. I used to have black hair, dark hair, dark brown hair, not black hair. Um, used to have nice hair, I got, I got told. Um, and um, it's funny, isn't it? you know, you look in the mirror and I'm just going to adjust that. You look in the mirror and each day, well, some people do, if you call me here, um, and you don't notice, you know, that at one minute you're sort of you know, dark haired or you know, a certain age, and then, you know, years later, you look like this. Uh, it's a gradual thing, it comes up slowly. So um, that was one of the ideas, and because I know a few people that have passed away, it, it, I always thought, well, do you want to go or do you want to die? You know, what's the options really? So I think at the moment I want to draw to the as soon as I can. And that's all the songs about, really. It's just about, you know, uh, acknowledging the fact that I'm getting old. Second track, Daniel White. 
this is one of my favourites. In fact, um, I mentioned Jackson's Farm in Heartland a moment ago about being favourite song. I think this was probably my favourite song. Well, yeah, to be honest. I think lyrically, I um, I, 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 I couldn't. I don't think I could add anything more to it. You know, I think it's one of those story songs and it tells about a person. And um, again, I finished that one off and on again. Oh no, actually I started at one and on then, the holiday. Um, I remember standing by, waiting for the, for the bus he to pick us up to take it back to the airport. And um, I just had this idea of a name, Daniel White. And the idea behind this song is, you know, I, I work a few days a week. And um, all my team at that time were dead young and they were talking about Dylan House because it was around like Christmas. Um, and if I was sitting there listening to him and thinking, you know, it's me, old, old guy, them young, you know. Did I realise I used to do all these things? And then I thought, well, when I was their age, there was obviously people that were like as many years older as I am to them. Did I ever think about whether them people had a life? So, you know, appearances can be deceptive if you look at someone that's a bit older, you know. Sometimes I think, what would you like when they were, when they were young? You know, I really enjoy looking at photographs of Daniel White people once had um, a when they were young and, um, you know, in adult White stage and, you know, um, the what they were like. You know, you see it all the time on Facebook, you see people celebrating wedding anniversaries and they've put a picture up of themselves um, and it's 30, no 40 years ago. It's, I just find it fascinating, you know. Right, track three, Heartlands. Right, this one, um, I don't really remember too much about writing this, to be honest. Um, I wrote two songs around at the same time, When the Morning Comes, which is going to be on a, on a project down the line. Um, and Heartlands, um, are both about sort of, you know, just getting off and escaping and just um, leaving things behind, you know. Um, the stresses of the world, the stresses of, of relationship maybe. Um, and again, I just had this picture of, I always think I live in America for some reason, I don't know why, but I always have this vision of driving down one of these highways and, you know, the sky, sort of panoramic and stuff like that. The fact that I can't drive and I'm, you know, I live, in, live on the Weddell, Merseyside, and I come from Liverpool, um, it doesn't seem to stop me from having this imagination that I, you know, I, I should be in America on one of those highways. And stuff like that, you know. Track four was a mother's is a mother's devotion. Um, oh right, now I love the um, I love what Phil Chisnell did on this. The, the riff Phil done. Um, the song itself um, I wrote again on that cruise. I remember writing the idea about written a couple of songs about you know parents um, and their you know their siblings and the trouble they may cause the parents and you know the devotion that they have when things aren't going too good in the family. Um, so this was about a mum who's got a wayward son and you know why why does he keep on doing the things he does? Um when it comes to record it, I, you know I I like the chords that are written and um it was reminiscent to me of Lady Eleanor by Linda's Farm. So we sat and listened to Lady Eleanor, John Lawton. Um, we always try and maybe have a reference record, maybe, to sort of, so we understand what I'm saying, because I'm not very good at explaining myself a lot of the time. Um, and we listened to that track, and I said, that's the kind of feel I'd like for it, you know, sort of, uh, with a big, long introduction. Um, so Phil came in, he done that wonderful riff, and John doubled it up with his guitar, it was great, you know. Right, next track, This Mountain Between Us, this is the duo with Sean. Now, um, this is the only co-written song on the album. Um, I actually wrote this at the Chris Difford songwriting retreat with a wonderful lady called Kendra Borman. It was our last day at the uh, day four, the last day to write a song. Um, and we, had, we only had three hours to write a song in uh, because um, they have a sort of, at the end of the week, they take everyone to this church and put a big show on for the, for the locals. So um, all that had to be sorted out. So we had a limited time and they said to write something that's a bit short. So um, I was determined that the previous three days, you know, the first day I was paired up with people 
and um, Dan Olsen, lovely bloke, came in and said, um, I need a song for me EP, I need a song for me EP, so um, we had to write, well we didn't have to write, but we, we, we wrote a song for him for his EP. And the second day I was writing with Mike Reed from the BBC, and he had a song that he wanted to finish in. And then day three I got paired with Dan again, and um, a couple of other nice blokes, Ethan and Nick. Um, and Dan said, what want a song for me EP, I want a song for me EP. So we, have to do some, we didn't have to do it again, but well, we'd done a song um, which was mainly for Dan. So on the fourth day I thought, right, I want a song for me, you know. So um, I said to Kendra, I said, um, you know, I'd like to do something that's a bit country. So I just messed around, sang a you know a little bit, played a few chords, and we got this idea together, which yeah, I thought was really nice. Uh, she put some really nice words to, to, to the melody. Um, and then, because I knew it was going to be a duet, I really wanted Siobhan to do, but Siobhan's based in Nashville in America, and I'm based, as I said before, in, on the Whittle. And um, she um, she came over for um, she comes over a couple of times a year um, for the Americana UK in the end of January, the beginning of February, and she pops up to see her family in Crosby. And she had a uh, she organised a little gig for this fabulous troupe of women, five women, including her, uh, called the Live Girls, which is um, which is an event that she twice now she's put, put that on. It's been two wonderful gigs to, to, uh, to see. Um, but I asked, I said to her, I've got this song, do you fancy doing a duet, you know? And she said, yeah, of course. Which was great because we'd been in, you know, she was in um, my little band, The Persuaders, not so little, there was about 10 of us, uh, back in the 80s, and she sang some of my songs then with John Kennedy. And then River City people sort of came from that band, they, they um, Siobhan and Paul, my drummer, David Boyfriend at the time was played bass and Tim, Paul's brother, played guitar. They formed a little band called River City People. So at one point they, that was going on at the same time. And I actually done some keyboards for River City People as well early on. But um, yeah, it was just great keeping in touch and getting it to do it, you know. And I think now I wouldn't I wouldn't have anyone else singing it, you know, really. I yeah, I did try but I always wanted Siobhan to sing it, you know, um, for old time's sake. Right, the next track, Bear Lake County, is um, it's probably the most upbeat song on the, 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 the 12 tracks that are part of the album. Uh, there is a bonus track, we'll come to that later. So Bear Lake County, I, that was inspired by Towns Van Zandt, who I've just discovered. I just absolutely adore Towns Van Zandt. He, um, he's got a track called Waiting Around to Die. Um, which is on the, it's on a couple of albums because he kept up recording the songs a few times. But the first album had this really nice piece to it. I don't know if I love that. So um, it's a story song. It's about someone who's high up in the early county because he's done something wrong and you know, no one knows who he is. But it's a bit like, you know, it's a bit of a fugitive. So there you go. Dying by Inches. Again, um, this song's about America. I, uh, you know, as I'm, I'm talking about no this, President Trump's in, um, in hospital with COVID-19. Now, I don't Spoke wish him any ill health. Um, I hope he gets well, better. But at the no same time, he's done a terrible thing. In, this world. in my opinion, to, um, to that country, he's, he's very divisive. Nothing is sacred. And, um, Nothing is fair. you know, I just um, have this feeling Spoke that if the I was there and he I'd be sort of wouldn't be, I'm not happy about it now but I'll, I'll be even more Before unhappy all my life with what's going on and all the you know and it's supposed to be it the land of hope and you know Remember diversity but it's before. not you know it, it, it's like it isn't at the moment to me so Down by Inches was, was a song it sort of kind of wrote it was as if I were living in, in America you know Jackson's Farm. Now, um, Jackson's Farm. I uh, there's two songs I wrote in open tuning. This was the first one. Um, I was uh, reading about Bob Dylan's Blood on the Tracks album and uh, the way he double he had double D tuning, which um, any guitarist will probably tell you what it is. But I'll tell you, it's where your two your top string and your bottom string, which are normally a, you tune them to D. So I'm not. 
the best guitarist in the world, but I came up with a couple of um, nice chords and I just got this song together about being lonely, being looking back on, on a relationship. Um, and Amy came in, as I said, at the beginning of this little chat, and she put some wonderful string parts in. And um, Ryan Roberts done a fabulous video for me of clips, which I thought was just went with the song. You know, brilliant. A Wiser Man Than Me is the next track. Um, this was the track, the last track I recorded, because it dropped a track on Polly in the summer, because it, it just didn't seem to... Is I like the song, it's you know, one of my favourite songs of mine, but it just didn't seem to um, feel like it should be part of it. It horns on and strings on, and I thought this is something for another project. So I just looked up the songs I had, and A Wiser Man Than Me, I thought, well, that's kind of similar to Growing Old, you know, mentions and mirrors and stuff like that. And the idea behind that one is, um, you know, they say, you know, when you you're thinking you might have the devil on your shoulder here or you know a little angel here and you know you're making uh, decisions based on your conscience and stuff like that and I took that little step further by sort of looking in the mirror looking at myself and saying you know are you really a wiser man than me you know kind of thing I'm almost over you uh, I came quite quickly uh, again that's the other song with the with the uh, with the tuning, the double D tuning. Um, I finished that off in Durham. I was I'm went off on a day trip to Durham. Um, and I had that on, and I finished that one off in Durham. I, I, I do I like to <laughs> write songs when I'm away, you know. I have bits of paper and my books and stuff like that with me. Uh, so when I'm sort of I'm on a coffee or maybe a bit later on if I'm on a pint or something like that. I'll just sort of, um, I'll be walking around thinking of lyrics and ideas and stuff like that and then I'll jot them down. Um, I'm almost over you with the first one we finished for the album and I put out as a single. And again, Brian Robertson, a wonderful video, which um, we filmed um, in a couple of places on the world. Um, Mel's Promenade um, and Liso Lighthouse were featured on it. And um, yeah, I do like that. I'm coming home. That again, I can't really. Uh, that came quite quickly. That song. I remember sitting in this garden. Um, used to work with Megan Louise, uh, lovely, brilliant singer-songwriter in her own right. Um, and I'm, she's quite young, and um, she worked with me I'm for, for home quite a while. Uh, got a duet with her to call Silhouettes, which. Quite fond of, but you know, um, my mum rang, um, they were going to come round pop to see me, and I um, the one you was out here, had the guitar, night. and I just started singing something like you know, the and um, I just finished it off basically. Um, it's Do kind of two old people who've been in a relationship for a long, long time. And, Still madly in love, which is a wonderful thing. And I always remember getting off off a bus. Um, sorry, I always remember being on a bus and seeing an old couple get off a bus. Um, with my, I can't believe you could even get on the bus that so But you could see that they were they just carefully each other, they were holding their hand, getting off. Not because they were going to stumble or fall and things like that, you know. It was, you know, after they got off, they were sort of walking down the street. So you could tell how much they loved each other. And they must have been married for about 50 or 60 years. So that's where that song came from. The last song, which actually isn't the last song on the album, it's um, the last song I wrote, um, The Backman Warbler. I read this book um, about um, life on Earth and all the strange things, how, how you know, plants and trees and come to be and stuff like that. And about... Um, you know, things becoming extinct, and I really got touched by the story about this little bird that was um, in Virginia, in America. The um, he used to fly. Each, someone noticed he used to fly to some trees at the same time every day and sing out and sing out. And it was there for a few years, and then one year it wasn't there. And they basically said that you know. It was the only one, it was the last of the species and it was looking for its mate. 
Mm-hmm. And that was the one of the songs mm-hmm. that I was about, you know, looking for your mate and, you know, and mm-hmm. again, what man can do to the planet Earth, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of these animals are extinct because we, you know, like I've been we do a lot of uh, bad damage to um, areas around the air, so on and so yeah. forth. There's a bonus track, which I put on, uh, which is not like the previous 12 tracks, um, and it was just a, a joke. It was called um, I Just Don't Care. Um, I get a little bit sort of... Um, I'm trying to think of the word, like where I'm swearing. <laughs> I get a little bit uh, disheartened sometimes, you know, when you send off for, uh, for gigs or festivals or something like that, you know, like, or your name's not mentioned. Um, um, and you notice that on the same bill that the promoters put out, it's all the same, it's the same people. Um, and I think, give us a break, just give us a chance, or give someone else a chance. Because there's a lot of people that don't get picked at these things. And, you know, in my opinion, you know, it should be a little bit more, less sort of friends. It should be trying new acts out and stuff like that. Give people a chance. So, um, I was just basically saying, oh, you know, I don't care anymore. You know, I'll just do what I do. And if people like it, if they like it, if they don't like it, well, I'm not going to get upset anymore. Right, and that's all the songs. Probably bored you all to tears. Mbit, what's next? Well, I'm working on two EPs um, at the moment, and I've got an album's worth of stuff, which I want to do if I can get the funding. Uh, but the EPs are going to be five tracks, where I ch- which I'm singing, which... Um, which is called Desert Hearts, and I'm quite proud of that track. It's about seven minutes long. It's got like loads of little bits in it. Uh, I can't wait for people to hear that one. And the other EP is five tracks of songs of mine sung by other people. When I first started off, I used to get people singing my songs. I never used to sing them myself. And um, anyway, I'll tell you about that the next time. The next time I'm doing something similar to this, but so far we've got three tracks down with some wonderful singers and some, I think, some great recordings. Um, I mean, I wrote them myself, but you know, it's again, it's I always find it's a team effort. You know, the musicians that come in, I don't particularly say to them, you know, just do this. I just let them, you know, come up with ideas. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't do. So. Thanks for uh, listening. I hope um, I haven't bored you too much. And um, if you like the sound of the album, um, get a copy. If you can't afford it and you want a physical copy, just email me and I'll post you one. Um, I'm not bothered too much. I mean, obviously, I'd like to get more sales so I can actually fund my next projects. Um, I think everyone in, in the music business feels the same way that, you know, the, um, Especially with COVID-19, you know, people aren't going out, we're not going out and playing live anymore, so we're not getting paid. Um, so, you know, if you like the album, uh, buy it, www.johnjenkinsmusic.com, or it's on Bandcamp. If you just want to listen to it, it's on SoundCloud and it's on Spotify. Um, it's three videos, which are on uh, YouTube, uh, just, I'm on Facebook as well. So it's interesting what I do, where I'm going. So thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, I hope I've bored you too much. And uh, thanks very much, Phil Callan, for uh, putting this together for me. I much appreciate it. Phil's going to be doing the next video of the Desert Heart, which is a big task. I tell you that. Now. If he had hair, he'd be pulling it out. I tell you that. Now. So now, bye for now.